us of our hope. You are our hope. You are our strength. You are our being. You are the reason why we can face tomorrow, oh God. Therefore, we are grateful for who you are in our midst, oh God. Father, may you do in this place that which we desire, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, may you meet us at the point of our needs tonight. We pray that, Lord, this is a divine appointment with you. And, Lord, because we are appointed with you tonight, we believe that, Lord, you have something tremendous for us. You have something great and something unique for somebody tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that works upon this house. Thank you for the grace and the anointing that works upon Prophet Didi. That, Lord, tonight as I'm standing in that anointing, Lord, may you do it beyond what I thought or imagined in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for meeting the people at the points of their need. Thank you for speaking to each one of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for moving us into one dimension to the other, one strength to the other, one glory to the other. As everybody who believes, shout a better amen. If you're a believer, say a victorious amen. If you are believing God tonight, say a better amen. Say if you're believing God tonight, We are grateful, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are so much glad that you are in this place. Thank you, Spirit acknowledge your greatness in this place. Thank you, Lord. Touch somebody who is expectant tonight. Cause somebody who is ready to deliver, to deliver their miracle tonight. Cause somebody who says, God, enough is enough. I am sick and tired of being on this level. May you push them into their destiny. Push them into their destiny. Push them into that level, Lord. Push them into that other dimension, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Push us, Lord, into a dimension that will shock everybody around us. Push us into that dimension, Lord, that will be able to blow the minds of our enemies. Lord, push us into that great dimension, oh God, beyond our expectation, beyond measure, beyond explanation, oh God. If you are believing, somebody say amen. Say a better amen. If your amen is not better than your neighbor, can you do a better amen? My God.
Halleluja. Halleluja, Holy Ghost Embassy. I said Halleluja. Halleluja, sons and daughters of the prophet of this house. Somebody say Amen. Say Amen. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say Amen. seats if you can. Talk to your neighbor, say neighbor. Only changed people can change their world. And tell your neighbor once again, say neighbor. Can you change your mindset only for a moment? And tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You can't give what you don't have and you can't become what you are not now talk to somebody once again say neighbor only changed people can change the world only transformed people can transform their world. Ask your neighbor once again, are you ready for your transformation? And are you ready for your change? Are you ready for a move? Are you ready for a turnaround? Tell them, are you ready? 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 Look at them. Don't feel shy. Just look at them. Ask somebody. Look into their eyes and ask them, are you ready, somebody? Are you really ready? And tell them, say, the God of Prophet Didi Isaac is about to shock you tonight and is about to do something new in your life. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I had prepared something very different from what I want to talk about tonight. Amen. You know, I love the Holy Spirit every time I prepare according to what I want. But the Holy Spirit always pushes me to what he wants. And I love it when the Holy Spirit leads us in the service. Hallelujah. It's always better that way, right? Is it better that way? Is it better that way? Can we allow the Spirit of God to speak to us tonight? Can we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us tonight? If you love the Holy Spirit, say, I love your Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm. Now tell your neighbor, say neighbor, until you are changed, you cannot become a candidate of faith. So tonight God is calling forth people who are going to be candidates of faith. Not just any kind of faith but the violent faith. Now, listen. I was teaching about violent faith sometime it was before last year. I remember sometime in November 2015, the Lord laid a message upon my heart which I entitled, 
your violent faith. Those who remember, right? And God is still pushing me to talk about your violent faith. I believe it's one of the messages that transformed some people's lives. And after that, a lot of testimonies came forth and their lives were never the same. And out of that, the Lord still wants to do something. And I believe that tonight, he's a God who moves us from one dimension to the other. So we are going to move on another dimension as we talk about engaging your violent faith. Sometimes prayer can fail you. Sometimes praying and fasting can fail you. Sometimes seeds and offerings, they can fail you. Sometimes everything that believers do in the society, you can do everything possible and nothing changes around you until such a moment comes when you involve, you engage your violent faith. Hallelujah. Now I said, you cannot change the world if you are not changed as an individual. So only changed people can change their world. Thank you, my beautiful choir. God bless you. Now listen. Only changed people can change their world. In other words, only the whose mindset have been changed can be able to transform or to change the lives around them. Now, in the Bible, when we get to read about the story about Peter, how many people know Peter here? He was one of the stubborn disciples of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, when we get about Peter, Peter means a what? It means a what? A rock. Peter means a rock. Amen? Now, he was transformed. Amen? Peter was transformed from being called who? Simon. Simon that means a shaken reed or a broken reed. So imagine somebody who was broken who was to mean a broken reed or a shaken reed. In other words, somebody who doesn't add value in the society. Somebody who is not regarded as a being. And then God comes, Jesus comes and transforms him and causes him to become a rock or to become a stone. And the Bible says he told him, he says, upon Upon which rock? Upon which rock? The Peter, which was the rock, right? Upon this rock, I shall build my church. And no gates of hell shall prevail against this rock. And tonight God wants to build something upon you. God wants to build something upon your life. I said God is about to build something upon your life. Listen, I don't care how you look at yourself. And God does not even care how bad or how useless you may look at yourself. But he's so much interested in rebuilding the same useless person into becoming a useful person. Because God is a God who uses the nothings of this world. into He turns them into the somethings of this world. He's a God who can turn nobodies into become some, somebody's. Hallelujah. So it is only interested about you engaging your violent faith. He's only interested about you standing up and knowing who your God is knowing what your purpose is and knowing what you are called to save him for because unless you understand your purpose you cannot understand what God has called you to do in that earth hmm. hallelujah I said hallelujah you're too holier than thou. I don't want to talk to people who look so holier than thou. You're scaring me. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, Jesus came into power. Hallelujah. He came in the power of the spirit that led him to do great exploits. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So until you are led by the spirit to change things around you, you can change nothing. 
So in other words, you don't have the capacity to change things. It's the spirit that drives you that has the capacity to change things. So there are certain things we might have tried with our own understanding, with our own abilities, with our own qualifications, with our own everything around us, and nothing is working out at all. Not because we are failures, but because we never engage the spirit that leads into changing things. So shake your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's either you're being laid by the spirit the spirit of God or otherwise. Now ask your neighbor, say neighbor, which spirit is leading you? Ask your neighbor, say which spirit is leading you? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Did your neighbor answer you? Did they answer you? Did they answer you? <laughs> Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now. <laughs> tell your neighbor, I don't care how they get offended, but just tell them the truth. Say, if your faith has no proof, then it's fake. If your faith has got no proof, then it's a fake faith. How do you make a non-believer to trust or to believe the God that you keep on claiming that he's a God almighty? How can you claim, how can you confess to them that Jesus is Lord if you have never experienced the Lordship of Jesus? How can you confess to them that God is our provider if he has never, you have never experienced his providing hand? So there are certain things you don't need to experience them, but you just need to jump and believe into them via faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Mm. So if your faith has got now proof, then that faith is fake. And I want you to understand that you need some degree of spiritual violence to fulfill your glorious destiny. You need some percentage of spiritual violence in order for you to fulfill your glorious destiny. If faith has got no roots, it cannot bear any fruits. I hope I'm right. Somebody's writing it down. If faith has got no roots, then it means it has no fruit that it can bear. Now, the violent faith is a kind of faith that changes men who are ready to change their world. The Bible says, the kingdom of God suffers violence and only the violent shall take it. By force. So in other words, there is a need of violence in order for you to acquire certain things in life. There are certain things you cannot just acquire on a silver plate before you work hard towards them. In other words, you need to set your goals. You need to set your target to say, if only I can do this and that in your violent faith at the end of the day, you can achieve whatsoever you want to achieve under the earth. Now the kingdom suffers violent, violence and only they that are violent shall take it by force. In other words, that thing that you desire, it does not require you just to pray and fast and then it ends there. It requires you to break certain 
borders. It requires you to break certain protocols. It requires you to take an extra mile. It requires you to go beyond what everybody else or where everybody else is stopping. In other words, you take a step of faith. You take a step that anybody else is refusing to take. Life is a risk and not taking risks is also a risk. So you'd rather take risks for the sake of your testimony. You'd rather take risks for the sake of your miracle. You'd rather take risks for the sake of your marriage. You'd rather take risks for the sake of your children. You'd rather take risks for the sake of your business. You'd rather do things that are mind-blowing to people who are looking at you. You'd rather do things beyond what people are expecting you to do because you know that you're not just doing them in your own ability. You are not doing those things in your own capacity. But you are doing them under the influence of the Holy Ghost and when God is on your side, promotion is on your side favor is on your side you are guaranteed for success if I have somebody here, can I hear a better amen Amen. now listen are you ready tonight I said are you ready tonight I said are you ready tonight Mm. so tonight your faith must be rooted Amen. You cannot have faith if you stay away from the word of the Lord. You can't believe in God if you don't know who God is. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God himself. So you can't claim to know God if you don't know his word. You can't claim to have him if you don't have his word. You can't claim what his promises say if you don't know what he promised you. So most of us as children of God, we malfunction because we don't know what God says about us. You don't know what he says about the sick. You don't know what he says about people who are mourning. You don't know what he says about people who are desperate. You don't know what he says about the broken hearted. You don't know what he says about any situation. And guess what? There is nothing that is new under the earth. Any circumstance, any situation, it is written in the word of the Lord. So whatsoever might be happening to you, you are not the first one to go through it. It is just a repetition of something that somebody else went through. So you don't make your problem to be so superior before God because he already dealt with such kind in the beginning. He already did with something better than what you're going through. So you don't make your problem. You don't begin to magnify your issue. You don't magnify your circumstance as though the whole world must come and mourn with you and sympathize with you. Hey, somebody. There are people who think they're the only ones who are going through the whole, you know, this problem where it's like the whole world can just come and sympathize with you. And yet there are people you're sitting next to tonight who are going through worse things, bad things, beyond your expectation. And you see them smiling. You see them happy. You don't know what they're going through. The only thing they have done is they've simply engaged their violent faith. You need to get to a point in life whereby nothing moves you except God himself. Your situation does not move God in any way. He moves your situations. Your bankruptness does not move God in any way. You can be bankrupt, but that does not move God in any way. Hey. Your singleness does not move God. Hey, hey. Oh no, God, I've been single for so long. So what do you want God to do? Are you the only one who is single? Are you the only one who is broke? Who knows, maybe somebody you're sitting next to is just a broke dude, maybe. <laughs> hallelujah. I say Hallelujah. Somebody say neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Say after tonight. I am engaging my violent faith. Say I am engaging my violent faith. Now listen. 
Listen, when you're driving an automatic car, you cannot engage in a gear without you pressing on the brake. Listen, listen to me. God did not allow that frustration and that depression to come to you so that it comes and finishes you. Your level of depression is not there to kill you, but the level of your depression, it is there to simply cause you to engage into another gear of your life, to engage you into another dimension of your life. The level of your depression is not there to finish you down, but it is simply there to cause you to realize, to say God is still next to you. And if God is on your side, um, no man can be against you. Um, when God is on your side, um, no matter the matter, you will surely come out. Um, 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 all you need tonight um, is just to press on. Um, all you need tonight, um, press on towards the mark of your high calling. Um, you know who God is. Um, you know where he's calling you to. Um, you know what he has called you for. You know who you are. You are not moved anyhow. You are not moved by circumstances. But you are a circumstance mover. You are a world changer. Somebody say, I am a world changer. Have you seen it in a moment? Let's do this one. Oh, Kataya, Mandi, Bosaya. Tonight, God wants us to engage another level of faith. How many people are saying, but you know I've been believing God ever since I came to this church, but nothing is moving at all. To the point that you don't even know whether you're in the right place or in the wrong place. And guess what? The devil will always make you feel uncomfortable at a place where he knows that that's where your miracle is. Can I talk to somebody here? Can I talk to somebody here? Sometimes God will allow you to pass through that thing. Not because he wants to finish you. But simply because he wants to get you ready. Uh oh. He wants to do what? Say he's getting me ready. He don't want you to be comfortable where you are. You know, when you're comfortable, you even sleep. You forget that there is prayer. You forget there is church. You forget that there is offering and tithe to give in the house of the Lord. Everything will be comfortable. Listen, some certain circumstances, certain situations, they push us into getting closer to God. Have you ever wondered when everything is okay, you forget about prayer? But when a certain wind blows. A certain level of confusion blows. A certain level of fire comes upon your camp. Can you sleep it? Can you sleep all night? Can you eat Monday to Monday? So they are. Hallelujah. Listen. There are certain things that will just be allowed just to get you closer to God. If he gave you everything that you wanted, were you still going to serve this God? If he gave you that car that you wanted, if he gave you the house that you wanted, if he gave you that good marriage that you wanted, if he gave you those good children that you wanted. He gave you all kinds of currencies that you wanted. Were you still going to get to a point and say, God, you are still God? Listen. Sometimes when God sorts out your issue, most believers, they get to a relaxing, relaxing moment where they feel everything is on the table and there's no need for prayer anymore. Is that true? Is that true? After I gave you that job that you wanted, 
Did you pray anymore? Uh oh. Oh no, I get so tired. I knock off late. I don't have time. When I get home, I just want to get, I'm so tired. I just feel like sleeping. You only pray, Father, cover me the blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes you don't even say amen. You pray while you're covering your blanket already on your head. You don't even know the following morning, you don't even remember whether you said an amen to your prayer or not. Is that true? Is that true? But when you're having a pressing moment, when you're having a pressing issue, do you sleep? Do you sleep? When others are busy snoring at the middle of the night, Rabba Gato Shikata Rabba Hallelujah. After God changed that husband of yours, what happened? Do you still pray for him? <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Mm. Faith is not just a mere talk. Faith is not just a mere talk. Faith is a fight. Faith is a what? Faith is a fight. It's not just a mere talk. In other words, a triumphant life only comes after a fight. I know you didn't hear me. Can I repeat that? A triumphant life, in other words, a victorious life, only comes after a fight. There can never be a winner where there's no fight. There can never be a winner where there's no competition. Now, in the book of First Timothy, chapter number 6, Verse 12, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Not any kind of faith. I mean, any kind of fight. But Apostle Paul is encouraging us to do what? To fight the good fight of faith. And he says, lay hold on the life eternal. Whereunto thou hast called and didst confess the good confession in the sight of many witnesses. First Timothy 6 verse 12. So God commands us to do what? To fight a good fight of faith. In other words, the people that wrong us they are not our enemies. There is always a spirit that drives them to make themselves to be enemies into our lives. So you don't fight with people physically. Go and fight a good fight of faith. Make use of your faith. Not just any kind of faith, but your violent faith. Where you know who your God is. And whosoever stands along your way, when they meet your God via your faith, nothing can stand on your way. I said nothing can stand on your way. I said nothing can stand on your way. And nothing can stop you tonight. I said nothing can stop you in your business. Nothing will stop you in your marriage. Nothing will stop you in your career. If you're a believer, say, I am unstoppable. Mm. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Mm. Jesus. Makuta Jesus. 
Jesus. Violent faith is a kind of faith that causes you not to let go until the desired results are obtained. You don't let go until desired results are obtained. Ask your neighbor, do you have such kind of a faith? And ask them, do you just give up on God anyhow? Ask your neighbor, do you give up on God? Have you ever given up on God? It means you don't have violent faith. Now, violent faith, I say it, my God, is a kind of faith that co will cause you not to let go until the desired results are obtained. Hallelujah. faith will always secure God's attention. It secures God's attention for you. In other words, every time a man and a woman of faith stands up, the attention of God shifts towards such kind of a person. In other words, you can be 10 or 20 or hundreds of you who are seeking for one position. But because of your violent faith, because of the level of your faith, you are able to obtain what others are not able to obtain. My God. Am I talking to somebody? Now, faith is a mystery of the kingdom. Faith is a mystery of a kingdom. In other words, faith is a secret of the kingdom. In simple terms. is a secret. A mystery is something that you can't describe. In other words, it's a secret of the kingdom. It is something It is something. It is something beyond that anybody can use to obtain something. Hallelujah. Now shake your neighbor, tell them, say neighbor, we need to come out out of the religious faith. You know, many people, they think it's enough just to have Jesus and it ends there. Right? That's the religious kind of faith. It just ends them on where they say, I'll make it to heaven and it ends there. Violent faith, it forces you to go beyond. Hmm. Now, faith is not a gentle stuff. It is a violent force. Faith is a violent force. It's not a gentle stuff. It's not a gentle spirit. It's not a gentle spirit. It's a violent force. And faith converts the word to power. It is faith that can convert a mere word into becoming a reality. It is, you know, violent faith. It is a kind of faith which God used during creation. Where you see nothing and you begin to speak words. And words begin to become a reality. You don't see yourself as a millionaire. The more you prophesy I'm a millionaire, the following day you'll wake up as a millionaire. You don't see yourself getting married. The following day you see yourself in a wedding gown. You don't see yourself getting settled. The other day you become a landlord. Oh. I know I'm not talking to somebody here. My God. 
Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So faith converts the word to power and faith tends. Hey. Tends someone into becoming a powerful being. You know, every time you see men of God, sometimes you see prophets who just come by faith, right? Prophet Didi will stand in front of us and you say, you, you are HIV negative. Your HIV is gone. Is it possible just to heal HIV by words? It's not possible. It only takes the words of faith. Which are the words of power? Which are the words of creation? You create what you don't see or what you don't have. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hmm. What is in your spirit will determine what you want to have in the reality. What is in your spirit? What you think about yourself is what you will become in the reality. Because it is your act of faith that will drive you into becoming what you want to become. Hallelujah. Shake your neighbor, tell them, Engage your violent faith. Shake them, say, engage your violent faith. Now, faith is the spiritual force. And faith is a spiritual empowerment for victory. It is a spiritual empowerment for victory. In other words, you cannot have victory in that thing that is oppressing you day and night until you engage yourself into such kind of a gear called violent faith. My God. And your violent faith, it is an unstoppable force. Say unstoppable force. It is the unstoppable force in the world of the spirit. In the world of the spirit. Ephesians 6 verse 16 says. Without taking up the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the evil one. In other words, faith is the sword of the spirit. Faith is a what? Say it's a sword of the spirit. In other words, faith has the capacity to separate that thing that you don't want in your life from what you want in your life. Hmm. Faith is the key to the world of all impossible things. It is the key to the world of impossibilities. Faith is the key to the world of impossibilities. The Bible says all things are possible to they that believe. So you need the impartation of faith or you need Because they think they have arrived, not knowing there's always somebody who can wait for you to see you. In other words, you carry the same DNA with him, you carry the same ability with him. What he cannot pull him down, it cannot pull you down. What can take him up, it can take you up. What cannot stop him, it cannot stop you. Say, I'm engaging 
my violent faith. You need this kind of faith to change the unchangeable. And faith can reverse the irreversible. Hmm. In other words, every situation is reversible by faith. That thing that is pressing you down, it can only be reversed by faith. That thing that is causing you to have sleepless nights, the debts that you are having tonight, I don't care what is pressing you down, it can be reversed by faith. The thing that you're saying, but I don't know how to come out of this. I don't know how I'm going to come out of my debts. I don't know how I'm going to pay my renters this month. And I don't know how I'm going to take care of this school fees for my kids. I don't know where my food will come from. I don't know where whatsoever. Yo, I don't know has an answer which is faith. If only you can engage 1% a little degree of faith, it can change the unchangeable. I've seen people who pray 24-7 all kind of tongues in capital letters, small letter, everything highlighted, not highlighted. And yet their things are not changing at all. You know why? They are praying, but they're not engaging a gear of faith. You are praying, but not knowing what you are expecting from this God. Listen to me. You need to get to a level in life where you know who your God is. You are not just speaking to a God who was. You are speaking to a God who you know that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are speaking to a God who knows we can make a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. You are not just speaking to another kind of a God who used to be. You are speaking to a God who is called the I am that I am. I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Am I helping somebody tonight? Am I helping somebody tonight? It is only faith that can cause you to obtain a good report. It is faith that can cause you to obtain a good report. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 11. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's a substance of things hoped for. In other words, it's the reality of the thing that you are desiring for. That's the simplest time I can put it. A substance of things hoped for. In other words, the actual result of the thing that you were expecting. Or maybe your meeting point of your need. Now, violent faith, it brings delivery of miracles. You can never have a delivery of an order if you never pressed an order. So you cannot have something that you did not order for. In other words, faith is your ticket for your order. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot expect Nando's to come, and, to come and deliver Nando's at your house if you did not place and press an order. You understand what I mean? So you have to press an order before God. 
in order for him to deliver your order. In other words, you cannot, God cannot give you something that you're not expecting from him. You don't expect a baby from a woman who is not pregnant. Uh -uh. Only expecting mothers, you expect a baby from them. Not so. Not so. Jesus. <laughs> I'm about to close in a moment. Ask your neighbor, have you engaged your faith tonight? Ask your neighbor, are you engaging your faith tonight? Now listen, you have prayed, you have fasted. Hey, you have gone to mountains. The whole family, they know you as a prayer warrior. And yet you, a prayer warrior, nothing good to show. I remember there was a time when I used to pray when fasting was my food. Uh, there was a time I prayed like a mad woman. I prayed for God to bring settlement in my life. I prayed all kind of prayer. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. I could pray from midnight to the following day, 12 noon, non-stop. Your voice is gone. You don't even remember how your voice sounds like. Every day your voice is hoarse. I would go to mountains, upon mountains. You go to this mountain for seven days. You change, you say, hey, I've been here for so long. People keep on coming, they're fighting me. Let me go to the other one. You go, Rakata, Jesus. <laughs> Listen. I had prayed all kinds of prayers and nothing was coming to a conclusion. I got to a point where I said, God, do you really hear people's prayer? Are you really there in heaven? Or where are you? Everything was scattered. You know where life batters you from left, right, center. You don't know where to run to. The only refuge that you have. Because the scripture told you that your help does not come from the east, west, south, or north. But your help comes from the Lord. And you keep on holding on to that scripture. You begin to tell God. You say, God, my help will not come from the east, west, south, or north. But it's going to come from you. And I'm not going to leave you because I know that you are the sustainer that I have. I know that you are my shield that I have. I know that you are the answer that I have. I know you are the solution that I need in my life. You tell him all kinds of things and yet nothing is coming forth. I got to that point in life where I told God and now I had to, and I remember <laughs> Jesus, you know I fasted for so long. I told some of you, right? At some point I prayed and fasted for 200 days. I told God I will not stop fasting until something happens. I will not stop calling on your name. Until my life changes. I grew up a rejected life. Everybody just rejected me. Everywhere I went I was a rejected stone. All my family that I thought were my family. Everybody was rejecting me. Until I got to a point I said God. I don't need nobody. But what I need is you. And if you don't show me who you are. Where am I going to run to? I tried. I had to seek help from left, right, center. Nobody was coming to my aid. Nobody was coming to my help. Until a moment came when the Lord began to teach me about violent faith. When the Lord began to teach me about how to use his word in a right way. When the moment came. When he began to remind me about his promises. When now the 
scripture kept on coming to me and saying, God is not a man that he should lie. No, a son of man that he needs repentance. So in other words, if he says he's going to bless you, he will surely bless you. If he says he's going to promote you, he will surely promote you. If he says he's going to heal you, he will surely heal you. If he says I'm going to bring settlement, he will surely settle you. And that moment came. Oh God. And now God laid me into a prayer of thanksgiving. I took 21 days as I was praying and fasting. I had made a vow before the Lord that every, every month when I was, I was born in March, every month, in the month when I was born, I would fast for 21 days. That meant I would fast from the 1st of March to the 21st. And I celebrate my birthday on the 20th of March. And I was praying and I was fasting. I was, God just laid me into a prayer of thanksgiving. I began to thank him. I began to thank him. I was thanking him for the things that I didn't know. I would go, you know, I was acting like I'm so crazy, you know, until one of my aunties was saying I'm running mad. They said I'm running mad with this God because every time they'll meet me, I'll be speaking in tongues. They didn't know why I was speaking in tongues and they could not understand. They're saying maybe I'm losing my mind. Little did they know that there was a pressing issue inside of me. There was something that the world could not satisfy. There was something that the world could not take out of me. Only God himself was about to release it out of me. And they called me. They would say, ah, that one. She's running mad. I think her God. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I laid into that prayer and fasting. I prayed. I was thanking God. Father, I thank you. I'll just write in big letters. I would write and I'll stick it on my door. I say, God, I thank you for my beautiful car. I thank you for international ministry. I thank you. By then, I was not a minister. I was a church member. Toilet cleaner in the church. Father, I thank you for international ministry. I'll write it in big letters. Father, I thank you. I thank you for my beautiful cars. I thank you for my handsome husband. I thank you for my beautiful children. I thank you, Lord, even for the people that I'm going to be healing out there. I thank you, Lord, for the congregations that I'm going to minister to. By then, there was no congregation, not even one. <laughs> hey, Rabbi, da, da, da. Hey. I remember when I went for my uncle's funeral last year, I went with media, I told her, I took her to the room where I was sleeping. When I was growing up, I said, this is the bedroom where I used to pray from. And you see, the house had no ceiling board. So when you pray, everybody's disturbed in the house. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I thanked God for everything. And it was as if it was a joke. Little did I know that my level of faith was being catapulted inside of me. My level of faith was being stirred up inside of me. I was seeing things which were not as though they are. Hmm. Sometimes you need to engage that level of faith where you begin to see yourself as though you are even when you are not. And I told God that year, I said, God, if first of June comes, I'm not engaged. I don't have any man in my life. Never should you bring any man. I'll save you single for the rest of my life. God, if you do not give me this and that, I will not do this and that. And I was making a covenant before the Lord. I made a vow before the Lord. And to a surprise, hey, before I concluded, <laughs> my answer had come. Amen. My solution had come. Amen. Hallelujah. And while I was still thinking that this is now my solution for me to start from somewhere, 
oh, I touched money that I'd never touched in my whole life. Oh, listen, I'd never touched that money in my whole life. It was the first time, about $20,000. I said, oh, God, is this how you answer people? By the time I was still about to celebrate my miracle, the man of God calls me and he says, get every money that you have give it to any man of God. You're sowing it for your marriage. I said, God, how? Eh, eh, you have been broke. <laughs> Even the broke people, they call you broke. You know that level, right? <laughs> and I had nothing. And sometimes you need to use faith to engage into certain activities. I had to pray to say, God, I did not hear you well. I prayed again until God, by faith, something just led me and said, go and do it. And when I did it, it did not take, that was in April, on the 60th of May, hey, a miracle happened. And I don't even know how. <laughs> Hallelujah. Miracle number one happened. Within two months, miracle number two happened. People were coming to my aid like no man's business. A certain lady just came and says, I'll cut her, I'll cut her for your flights everywhere you go in the world, everywhere. In the next three years, I'll buy you tickets. Anywhere you want to go. Somebody who had never tested a flight before. Uh oh, from Zupuko. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So, he's a God who can change things within no time. Now I laugh about it. By then it was painful. You understand? But now I laugh about it. I'm a living testimony. It is the level of faith that brought me out of that mess. Now tonight, I want to provoke your faith. The same God who turned my life around can turn your life around, 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 around even better than where I am. Is there anything good that can come out of Nazareth? Yes, there is you who is a good thing that can come out of Nazareth. Yes, there is a good thing that can come out of you. He's a God who can bring out of a broken person and bring out the best out of them. He's a God who can change your story within a blink of an eye. I want to talk to somebody who says, but God, I've prayed, I've fasted, but things are not changing. I've laid seeds on the altar and it's like my altar is quiet. They silence on my altar. Have been on that moment, but your silence will not be there forever. There will be a shaking. I said 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 there will be a shaking. Your violent faith shall shake nations. Violent faith shall shake things around you. Sometimes you don't need the faith of your pastor. You need your personal faith. You don't need the belief of your pastor. You need the personal belief. Knowing who your God is. Knowing what you're capable of doing. Knowing what he's capable of doing. Knowing what he can do somebody. Are you fed up with where you are? Are you fed up? I don't want to talk to somebody who says I'm comfortable, everything is okay. I'm happily married, having everything whatsoever. The only problem I have maybe is where to spend my money. I'm not talking to such kind, but I'm talking to people who know they're going into through a reality of life. Where life has tried to somersault them and yet they are still standing 
by the grace of God. And yet, they're still moving on by the grace of God. And yet, they still have a reason to lift up their hands and say hallelujah in the highest. And yet, they still have a reason to say, God, you're worthy of my praises. And yet, they still have a reason to wake up every morning and say, thank you, God, because you live in. Oh, God of hosts. My God. Faith is the conviction of a reality. So if you don't have the conviction of the reality, you cannot live the reality. You cannot become the reality. Hmm. Ask your neighbor, are you convicted about what you want to achieve? About what you want to become? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Violent faith will cause you not to give up on anything in life. Don't give up. Don't give up. Tell somebody, don't give up. Tell them, don't give up. Tell somebody, don't give up. Tell them, don't give up. You can still do it. You can still become it. Oh, I know you I'm talking to somebody who is not here. Say, neighbor, don't give up. You can still become it. I believe you can still become it. I believe God can still work out something out of you. I believe something can still come out of you. I said, I believe something can still come out of you. I said, something can still come out of you. I said, something can still come out of you. Lift up your hands and say, hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. And guess what? You need violent faith to bear the unbearable. You need that kind of faith to bear the unbearable. There are certain circumstances you cannot bear them, but you can only bear them by the violent. God says, those that are engaging in this kind of faith tonight, he's about to show them that he's God. I said, he's about to show them that he's God. I said, he's about to experience himself in your life as a God. He's about to cause you to experience the unfailing power of God. Hallelujah. Now shake your neighbor, say neighbor. In spite of what I see, I know what God says about me. Speak it by faith. Say neighbor. Stand up on your feet. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. In spite of what I see, I know what God says about me. Say neighbor, you see me happy, you see me celebrating, it's because I know what God has for me, I know what God has for me, I know what God has for me, oh my God, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you may never see it. You may never see it. You may not see it right now. But guess what? It'll surely come to pass. It'll surely come to pass. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Your mess is turning into a message. Say your mess is turning into a message. Say neighbor, your mess is turning into.
into a message. Say neighbor. Your disappointment is becoming an appointment tonight. Say neighbor. You may not see it. But I am becoming it. I am becoming it. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Say neighbor. Shake somebody. Say neighbor. Shake them. Say neighbor. Don't look at me this way. Say don't look at me this way. Say I am that project. In the hands of the creator. I am getting back. In the potter's hands. And as I get in the potter's hands. I know my life is turning around. My life is changing tonight. My life is transforming tonight. Somebody said neighbor. Said neighbor. Said neighbor. Those who laughed at me. They shall come and laugh with me. Because the God that I save. He is on my side. And when he's on my side. I know what I have. I know who I am. I know what I can achieve. Somebody say neighbor. Listen. Listen. You might be preaching to somebody who is not listening to you. Turn to another neighbor who listened to your preaching. Say neighbor. I am preaching to you. Say neighbor. I am talking to you. Say neighbor. I am ministering to you. Say neighbor. That disappointment. It is turning into an appointment. Say neighbor. Your bankruptness. Your bank is about to become full. Say your bank is becoming full. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Say neighbor. Don't look at me like this. Next time you see me. I am becoming a CEO. Say the next time you see me. You am becoming a boss. The next time you see me. I am becoming a company owner. Not just a company owner. But I'll be owning millions in dollars and pounds. If I'm talking to somebody, say amen. amen. Say neighbor. neighbor. Listen. Say neighbor. neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. What do you see? What do you see? When you look at me. When you look at me. Power. And guess what? You may look as though you are not. You may look as though you are a nobody. But after you engage your violent faith, oh. you know what your God is capable of oh, doing. Yes. He's a God who can do the impossible. Oh, yes. He's a God who can turn you from nothing into somebody. Oh, yes. He's a God who makes ways where there seem to be no oh, way. Yes. He's a God who parted the Red Sea. Oh, yes. He's a God who fed the 5,000. Oh. He's a God who provided for Abraham. Oh, yes. He's the God your provider. Oh, yes. He's the God your healer. Oh, yes. He's the God your sustainer. Oh, yes. He's the God your keeper. Oh, yes. He's the God who watches you day and oh, night. Yes. For the word of the Lord says, oh. He never sleeps nor slumbers oh. for your sake. Oh. And guess what? Your life. Power. Your life. I said what? I said what? I said what? Say my life. My life. Say my life. My life. Say my life. My life. Somebody say, my life will never be the same again. We'll never be the same again. Power. Check somebody. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. You know why? You know why? Say, you know why? You know why? I was applying a little break. I was applying a little break. Just to engage into this gear. Just to engage into this gear. Called the violent faith. Called the violent faith. Power. Oh yes. You know, people who have violent faith, they know they are sick. They don't say, I am sick. They just say, my body is misbehaving. Oh, oh my body is powerful. Oh yes. Oh yeah. You know, you got nothing in your bank. You don't say, I'm broke. 
He said, my accounts are loaded. Oh. <laughs> you say your accounts are what? Loaded. Are your accounts loaded? Oh, yes. Are they equipped? Oh, yes. You don't say you're broke. You say, oh, my account is too loaded. Oh, yes. They are too full. Uh-huh. <laughs> and yet you know there's only BB. Book balance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. Ask my neighbor, are you on BB or you are full? Are you on BB or you are full? Say, I am loaded. I am loaded. And guess what? Your dates are being canceled tonight. I receive. I say your dates are being canceled tonight. I receive. 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 The Lord who makes ways where there seem to be no way. Amen. He's about to make a way for you. I have seen it. I said he's about to make a way for I you. I receive it. I want you to lift up your hands. And I want you to tell God. Say, Father, Father help me. Help me. To engage. To engage. In this kind of faith. In this kind of faith. I don't just want to be a believer. I don't just want to be a believer. I want to be a man or a woman of violent faith. I want to be a man of violent faith. Say, I want to be a woman or a man of violent faith. I want to be a man of violent faith. Say, Father. Father. I don't just want to be a talker. I don't just want to be a talker. I want to be a reality of your word. I want to be a reality of your word. I want to live a reality of your promises. I want to live a reality of your promises. Say, Father, Father, help me, help me to engage, to engage in this kind of faith. In this kind of faith. Say the violent faith. The violent faith. The faith. The faith that will shake. That will shake the unshakable. The unshakable. That will change. That will change the unchangeable. The unchangeable. Amen. Power. Say, Father. Father, help me, help me to engage, to engage in this kind of faith. In this kind of faith, the kind of faith, the kind of faith that will change, that will change the unchangeable. The unchangeable. Lift up your hands and pray that prayer. On top of your voice, somebody. Pray on top of your voice if you can. Makato ripa kasento ripa kato. Red to Kataye Bayado, Zan to Kayende, Riprokoto, Ripa Sadosh, Ritokoto, Ripragada Sagadosh, Ritokata Reprikido, Makusakata, Repranda Labragada, Rota da 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 da, Ezuka, Ekanta Kuda, Ezuda, Riprakande, Librodozo, Rekata Labrakanda, Retu Katakata Kadaga, Roto Gura, Hika Sagadosh, Riprokoto, Ripra. Kanda masukada yesuta mantukata reprokonda la bragada masukodo shikata la bragada makazagado shente liprokodo zikata reboda enda la bragada makusa kanta la bragado shetukada makunda la bragada esukadash into kata la bragada la dada. Red to Karamande, Rebuzagados, Eta Kadara Bragados, Esuka, Esanta, Esuda, E La Bragado, Sente Libosa, Etu Gayada, Esada Bragado, Riprocondo Libregados, Eto Kadaradada, Rebagado Santa La Bragada, Esuta La Bragande, in the name of Jesus. Oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I said in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Say, Father. Father. I thank you. I thank you. For my violent faith tonight. For my violent faith tonight. Amen. Oh, Jesus. That's my boss. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. You must get to a point where everybody else thinks this is the end of you. Amen. And yet you know who your God is. Yes. He's a God of the last hour. Amen. He's a God of the last minute. Oh, yes. He's a God who makes words where there seem to be no way. Amen. You may be late. But that does not mean you will not have it. Amen. It may come after so many months, after so many years. But guess what? It is already registered in the bank of heaven. Amen. And guess what? You cannot deposit into an account where I mean, you cannot withdraw from an account where you never deposited. So you cannot go to the ATM with your ATM card if you know there's no cash in the, in the ATM, in the, in the, in the account. Amen. So in your prayer bank, what kind of savings have you saved there? Amen. What kind of deposits have you made in your prayer bank? so that God may cause you to withdraw from that bank. You want to withdraw a miracle which you don't deposit? Hallelujah. Amen. He's a God of order. He cannot give you what you don't need. He can't. He says, I'll grant you your heart desires. So it is what I desire before him that he will grant unto me. Ask your neighbor, what have you deposited in your prayer bank? What have you deposited in your prayer bank? You can't deposit a car and yet you're expecting a house. You cannot deposit one rand and you expect to rip 100 million rands. You see what I mean? So what you sow is what you reap, even in the prayer life. What you give before the altar of God is what you get in return. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for speaking to me tonight. Thank you for speaking to me tonight. If he was speaking to you, just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for transforming me. Thank you for transforming me. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Have your seats if you can.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same. I said your life will never be the same. How many are expecting a miracle tonight? Your miracle is guaranteed. I receive. I said after tonight, your miracle is guaranteed. I receive. And guess what? The Lord says, when you go home, before you sleep, go and dance a dance of victory. Wow. That's an instruction. When you go home, go and do what? Huh? Dance of victory. You know when you have received good news? You know when your, your team is winning again? Do you know how you celebrate? Oh, yes. Do you know how you celebrate? Oh, yes. If you are believing God for marriage this year, oh, yes. I decree and I declare, when you go home, go and demonstrate as a bride how you walk on your wedding day. Oh. Go and demonstrate how you do the walking in the church for a blessing and at your reception. Go and demonstrate it when you go home. Oh. When you are seeing yourself as a millionaire, go and begin to dance and begin to show yourself a sign of counting millions of money. Amen. Hey! Amen. Hey! Amen. Jesus. That's my ball. Listen. Go and dance a dance of what? Go and dance a dance of what? In the midst of your confusion in your marriage, go. Go and do what? Dance a dance of victory. You know that God. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey. My God. Listen. The Lord was saying, you know, there are certain people that he would deliberately eliminate off your lives. Don't cry about them. Amen. Don't worry about them. Amen. Just beat your babies forever and ever. Amen. They'll see you when you get to the top. Oh, and by the time they'll be wanting to see you, they'll love to queue appointment 20 days before they see you. Oh. <laughs> A time is coming. When the Lord will lift you up. I receive it. The time is coming. For you to see the neighbor you are sitting next to. You have to book an appointment a month before. He's fully booked. I receive. Imagine I want to see our secretary, Sister Zandi. I want to see her. And then her PA or her secretary says, no, you can't see her. She's fully booked until maybe in September. Oh. Hey! How will you feel when you looked at her as a nobody in the first place? Oh. How will you feel? That's how your enemies will feel after tonight. I receive it. Listen, when you go home, go and dance a what? Victory dance. Go and do what? Hey! I mean dance now. Oh, yes. Not a joke of a dance. I mean, go and dance a dance of it. If you know you don't have a job, go and dance with your CV in your hands. Hey! You say, God, I thank you for my job. I thank you because by this time tomorrow, I'll be employed. By this time next week, Monday, I'll be employed. Hey! Go and dance a one. Stand up on your feet. Maybe we can demonstrate it. Are we ready to demonstrate?
dancing, really. Listen. See yourself what you are not. Listen, I know you have so many needs, but there is one need that you know that this is my emergency. Your emergency point. I want you to begin to celebrate your emergency now. The same way for testimony. But I didn't see people dancing. I don't know if there's bosses or something. Can we dance again? Can we dance again? Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, give me space. Ah, uh shake, -uh. move now. Say, neighbor, give me space. Yeah, I want to see people dancing once more time.
dance what? A dance of victory. You know what that means? You are not a loser. You are a winner. is too sad then I don't know they are questionable if your neighbor is not smiling hey 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 ask them are you lost are you in the same place with me <laughs> hallelujah hit a high five to somebody tell them that you are you are blessed tell them you are blessed tell them you are blessed you're about to come and testify. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Jesus Christ, I love you. Son of the living God, I love you. Thank you. to talk to him and he left the service before it ended I remember him but it is well since today he's there right Amen. okay listen we have a prophetic service on Sunday with our prophet right he's the one who prophesies if I do, it's only 1% of what he does. Right? One, even half percentage. Maybe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, for him it's simple. The Lord had instructed me to pray for you. Do you know someone from Cameroon? Anyone from Cameroon? Do you know anyone from Cameroon? There is a mega connection that has to do with somebody from Cameroon. I receive. Your life. I receive, Mama. This will be a point of your breakthrough. I receive it. But the Lord had instructed me to specifically pray for your divine protection. I receive, Mama. Because there are some attempts of accidents around your life. Ah, you don't receive accident. Ah? I rebuke it, Mama. I don't want you to be involved in any accident. That day, I told you, eh, we need to cover that man in the blood of Jesus. Do you remember? Yeah, that was our prayer. Yeah. God instructed me to pray for his divine protection. To say, because he's under the anointing of the prophet of this house, Amen. he must be preserved. Amen. Your life must be preserved. Yeah, and guess what? After tonight after tonight. If there are people who are going to dance that dance, you must dance better than anyone else. Yes, mama, I will dance. Because there's a mega breakthrough that is going to come upon your head, upon your life. If you need a breakthrough, receive your own. I receive. I give you the prophetic power. Okay.
prophet to speak about your ministry. Amen, Mama. That's true. So, prophesy, Mama. You came here for Prophet Didi. Amen. And you didn't know he was not here. Amen, Mama. So, his God is here. He is not here, but his God is here. Amen, Mama. So, the Lord is about to eliminate certain connections around your life. Amen. For a divine purpose. Amen. Because he's about to use you mightily. Amen. And there are certain people who are not supposed to be part and parcel of the miracle of your next level. Amen. So there will be a lot of clearance going on. Amen. You know, sometimes God will eliminate certain things, certain people around you, not because they are not worth it, but because he does not want them to be a beneficiary of your next anointing. Amen. So there will be that great grace over your life. Mm. Go. You remember the God of Prophet Didi. Amen. Hey. I'm not prophesying. I'm just encouragement. Encouragement, right? Is it a word of encouragement? Hold your husband's hand. that surpasses every human understanding. Thank the Lord. I receive. No confusion shall prevail against your marriage. I receive. receive. Any wind. Any wind. Any wind of destruction, receive. I bind it now in the name of Jesus. Receive now. No force shall cause you to separate. Oh yes. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. Sayamandala Brokush Rita Kato Ramantula Bagadesh I pray for you. May the Lord Jehovah Jireh be your provider. May He sustain you from tonight. You will not wonder and find out how did it happen. Jehovah, my shocker, will shock you. Jehovah, my sustainer, will sustain you. My encouragement for you tonight is go and celebrate. Go and celebrate. Go and celebrate. Go and celebrate. If you also need celebration, go and celebrate. We receive, Mama. Thank you. There's a power of the Holy Spirit that is going to hit you right there. Hold each other. Just hold each other. You know, I love, I trust the Holy Spirit so much. Is a spirit of reconciliation. Is a spirit of peace. May he give you peace right now. The peace that surpasses every human understanding. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. He touched me. restoration in every area of your marriage. Mega restoration. There is a big restoration that is coming to your household. We receive. Thank you. Thank Thank you, you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus.
everybody who is here tonight on behalf of Prophet D and all the viewers out there. The Lord bless you for being part and parcel of this service tonight. Let it be a night of your remembrance. Amen. May the Lord of remembrance remember you and your household. In the name of Jesus, I receive. you are remembered for greatness. I receive. You are remembered for promotion. I receive. You are remembered for favor. I receive. You are remembered for increase. I receive. You are remembered. I receive. The God of remembrance has surely remembered you tonight. I receive. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord favor you. Thank you, our viewers. And we say thank you for being part and parcel of Facebook Live and YouTube and DDTV. May the Lord bless you and favor you. And till we meet again in the next service, which is on Sunday, as we'll be having our prophet D.D. Isaac, as we'll be coming to do a prophetic service in this place. I pray that you're part and parcel of it. On Sunday around 9 o'clock, don't come late, come on time. And the Lord will surely bless you and your life will never be the same again. And we say shalom, shalom, shalom for now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have your seats if you can in a moment. <laughs>